Morning, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. This is uh, unexpected to see today. I um, did not expect to see a whole mess of snow. I uh, got more snow today than I did during the blizzard. And this was fully unexpected. It's really pretty. It's snowing pretty heavily. And I do have accumulation. And here's something. The wind turbine is so quiet, it's covered in snow. I haven't had wind since I put that up. How weird is that? This is the windy season. And I haven't had wind since I put the wind turbine up. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Sort of ironic. So, um, they're saying though that tonight we're going to have, today they're saying 20 and 30 mile an hour winds increasing to 50 mile an hour winds tonight. So, I've got to do my preps again to make sure everything will be safe tonight. But it's really coming down in big fat flakes right now. It's actually quite pretty. Huge fat flakes. I'm going to have to go sweep the solar panels again. Not a bit of wind. It's just building up. That sure is pretty. I um, swept my paths. I'm going to have to go out and do it again. It's funny that I'm getting more snow now than during the blizzard. So I just got to keep at it. Keep knocking snow off the fences of the garden and the chicken area. Because that starts pulling them down and destroying them. And keep sweeping off the solar panels. Keep shoveling out my pathways. It's a... Uh, ongoing job although it sure is pretty that's uh... some people ask me in the comments why wouldn't i want to move down south where it's it's warm and the funny thing is you talk to people out down there where it's warm and they say how they would love to see the snow sometimes and I guess people just have to learn to be happy where they are. And I like this place. Snow and all. You just learn to enjoy it and uh, admire the beauty of it. Well, the snow is slowing down. And it's getting warmer out. I'm out of breath because I've been shoveling. See this packs? It's really uh, getting wet now. It's not yet 30, but... Supposed to warm up to about uh, 30 this afternoon, and then it's going to start dropping sharply. With the snow softening up, I was able to get that cord out of my way. It was winding around through my pathways all this time. I finally got that out of the way. I swept the solar panels again. The snow has pretty much stopped. I made my pads around, I try to maintain a pathway around everything. And uh, out to the tent, out to the other tent, out to the wood pile, out through, snaking around, out to the, uh, around the batteries. All my favorite shortcuts, this way, this way, across the chickens in front of the solar panels, out to the water, out this way around in front of the camper. I keep the paths maintained. And then this will melt. And, uh, if the sun comes out at all today this will melt free and clear down to the dirt again for me and that'll help a lot in uh, in help give me good traction because we're gonna get a deep freeze again this week it's supposed to get down to uh, negative temperatures tonight so I parked my car up there it fully snowed in this morning I don't dare bring it down the slippery slope. I don't think I could get it back up, and that's where it, that's where I park it and leave it each day. So, uh, 
That's it. The truck, on the other hand, can come and go through pretty much anything with the four-wheel drive, so I'm not worried. That's all right. I keep that here then. Um, again, a lot of reasons, or a lot of people are asking me why I'm not building right now. Like, why don't I build a room on the back of the tiny house? This stuff is uh, wet, and the water is frozen inside the fibers. It makes cutting harder, and you do not really, really want to work with waterlogged and frozen wood because when it starts to shrink and swell and and uh, get to its normal size and shape when the weather changes it'll ruin everything so I'm sort of at a standstill on construction I still get a lot of people asking me why don't you build this why don't you build that well it's because the wood is under under the snow and uh, and water right now when it dries up I'll be building again trust me I really want to get building I really do but without having had a good shelter for the wood, I was, I was stalled. Yeah, everybody keeps saying, get tarps, get tarps, but tarps cost money. 30 50 60 to to $100 for tarps to cover that wood pile. And um, I just haven't had it. So the wood sits. It'll be there in the spring. That it'll be. And it'll be fine. It sat 10 years out in the forest, so here at least it's got airflow between the boards. So it'll be good. Well, I'm going to go in and have a nice hot drink after shoveling. Of course, I'm not cold. It's really nice out. Let's go in and see what the solar panels are doing because the sun is shining right now. Uh, one of my thoughts today is I want to clear out in front of the house. And what I want to do, as I said, and prop up those solar panels up against the tiny house. So it means I've got to get all of this out of here, get the wagon out of here. And I've got the boxes from upstairs, all my empty boxes finally. I had to get them out of here. There is no garbage removal service right now, so that's a problem. It's piling up on me until the thaw cleans our private lane. There is no garbage removal service. So, oh look, that's really pretty, I think. That's why some people stay up north for the views. You don't get that down south. Actually, I don't know if you get these trees down south. I'm pulling in 180 watts of power. And uh, right now it's, what, 11 o'clock in the morning, so the sun is not yet over. I'm hitting 200 watts. It's still not sunny, and the sun is not yet over the solar panels, so that's pretty decent for the early morning hours. I think what I hope to do, think what I hope to do, <laughs> um, I'm thinking about changing the angle of those solar panels in the meadow once I get the ones up by the house, and then I'll catch morning sunlight and afternoon sunlight, and really maximize what's coming in. And the baby, and the baby comes and says hi to me, so... Uh, power is increasing. It'll start getting more and more and more, and I'll hit around 300 watts. Um, and that's another thing I see a lot in the questions and comments. Why are you pulling in only 200 watts with 800 watts of solar panels? It's winter, the sun is lower in the sky, and you're just not going to get as much in winter. It is just that way in the northern climates. Winter brings reduced solar panel output, and that's just a fact. Well, the girls are doing their job. So, four eggs today. That's nice. Um, means that the rooster, the red rooster, was eating at least four eggs a day. He was eating well. Eating chicken eggs. So, I'm getting nice, pretty, clean, white chicken eggs. Don't have to fight with him to get my, uh, my own food. So, I think I know what we're going to have for lunch today. Probably going to have a uh, egg and cheese omelet. I have my shower stall parts brought inside. While I'm working on plumbing, I figure I might as well work on the shower stall as well. And many people have suggested I use the shower as a drip uh, area for the test in the water tanks, which is a good idea. And in case there is a leak upstairs, it can drain down into the shower. Pulling it in, 32 inches looks bigger than I thought. 
and there it is now the thing is I'm gonna have to build a base for that to raise it up off the floor to allow the water to drain out through the wall of the bathroom so I gotta take that in the bathroom and get some ideas of how and where that's gonna go and figure out how this thing goes together so that I can start building the framework and get that up off the floor and get it in there put the drain in and then start uh, putting the rest together well it's five o'clock the days are getting brighter uh, a little out of breath I've been uh, working outside all day shoveling snow clearing snow off tents um, cleaning out the chicken run Stocking, splitting wood. It's uh, going to be really, really cold this week. So today was a high of 36 degrees here in my microclimate. It was only supposed to be in the 20s this afternoon, but it stayed pretty warm here in my meadow. So I do have an advantage of a localized little bit of weather here. The wind has been gusting but the wind turbine hasn't really done anything yet I've been watching it and uh, it just it's really gusty winds at the ground level and I think that's because the the sun was melting the snow and then the warmer air above it was causing wind to flow so I'm thinking honestly about putting a wind turbine down lower because last year I did produce a little bit of power down lower now, I've been working in the tiny house on wheels. My, I don't have a lot of light in here right now, so you'll have to bear with me. I don't have the light on the camera. I've got my shower sitting here next to the toilet and the cat litter next to that, and it's gonna fit. I've done my measurements. Most of the day was off camera, and in between running around outside, I was sorting out the shower stall and sizing things up and figuring out what tools I need and what kind of plumbing in the end all I ended up needing is a piece of two inch PVC pipe so that was no big deal at all a baby cat showing up so that'll go right in there I'll not sure when I'm gonna start on that but I have everything lined up everything ready and I'm going to put in the shower stall and then I can start testing the upstairs water connections. As somebody suggested, testing the water tank in the shower is a perfect idea. So that'll be nice. And then having the water tank upstairs will make it warm and I can gravity feed water in through the shower downstairs, which would be convenient for lukewarm showering. I think it'll give me um, probably 80 to 90 degree water which isn't perfect shower temperature but it sure isn't uncomfortable so anyway so I've got the parts laid out here and over here and in the living room then over here I've got the parts laid out all over it's quite a complex thing actually so I'm trying to figure all that out right now that just sort of sums up what I did today sorry there wasn't a lot of video but uh, I think you would have been bored to death with me trying to sort out and figure out my shower. A um, lot of reading and figuring and calculating and measuring. So forgive me for that. Right now, I'm just running around chasing things around the yard. We've got 25 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 40 and 50 miles an hour they're calling for. And I am just chasing things around uh, tarps, tarps especially, are just ripping out of place. I had to put buckets on top of my tarp outside. Sorry, there's no focus. Come on, computer thing. There you go. I um, put buckets on my tarp here because it kept ripping around and whipping through the area no matter what I did. I don't know if you can see the trees back there swaying. It's, uh, it's actually scary to live surrounded by trees when uh, they're swaying that badly all over the place it's um, of course it's calming down a little as I'm showing it but it's really gusting winds it's, it's really crazy there's stuff blowing all over the place um, 
branches, leaves, twigs, snow, tarps, and anything else the wind can dig up. So I'm continuously repositioning stuff, trying to re-secure things, hoping the tents will be all right. I piled snow on the sides as well today, on, on the sides of the tents to help weigh it down better. And uh, I've been watching the wind turbine. It seems to be holding up all right. It still isn't producing much power, although I've had it kick up to um, full battery voltage a couple times, but it's only for a few seconds now and then. So I'm just really busy running around and around and around. Get my exercise. Now there's a nice sight. Uh, well, trying to focus. Finally, I got some power coming in. It's hard for the camera to focus, and it's dying. It took me forever to get the camera to turn on and then to focus on that. I have a digital voltmeter sitting here, right next to all my equipment in the tiny house on wheels. There it comes. And that is for my wind power. It only kicks on at 4 volts. That's the um, power the voltage where the uh, voltmeter starts to, sh to work, to turn on. And anyway, I sorry I'm all black in here and I'm trying to manipulate things around. I, um, I'm getting a little bit of power kicking in, but the, uh, the wind, although it's about, it's pretty much sustained 25 mile an hour winds, it's gusting up by the tower uh, here. 18 mile an hour wind um, but it's really gusty up at the tower level it's really powerful at the level where the wind station is so definitely the more I watch this this is what I would call off-grid TV uh, I don't know if other families are like this but I do know your charge controller and your battery status is your television. You watch your battery status day and night. That is a constant non-stop thing that you're monitoring continuously. And then the the wind, uh, the weather, the weather affects everything out here for me because I'm working outdoors all the time. And the wind, that is definitely something I keep my eye on continuously. That's, that's off-grid TV. Your charge controller, battery status, and the weather. Off-grid TV. I'm looking at my TriStar MPPT solar charge controller online. This is the, I've logged it in. This is something I've never shown you before. I have logged in the charge controller to my computer through a Ethernet cable. I plugged in the charge controller to my modem. And I'm going to put this on a tripod so I can better show you what I'm looking at here. Now I'm going to attempt to zoom in here to today's specs. This is going to be awkward to try to show you. Now here, don't be shocked or alarmed because I've never seen this. I don't understand what I'm seeing here. My mouse, I'm looking at maximum battery voltage, okay? 15.66, that's fine. Minimum battery voltage today was 11.98. Now here's what shocks me. I've never seen this voltage. That when when I uh, first checked the batteries this morning, no load overnight, the charge controller was telling me 12.2 volts, which because of it being um, below freezing last night and the batteries at rest, they're showing about 12.2, 12.3 volts every morning. So I don't know where this minimum battery voltage of 11.98 Yesterday 11.88, the day before 11.90. I don't know where these voltages are coming from. I've never seen it. I've never seen this. And at night I shut off all loads on this forklift battery bank. So I am going to actually have to look into seeing why is this showing such a low voltage when on the charge control itself I never see this condition. No way, I would freak out if I saw 11.98. Now the other numbers seem to fit in with everything I've been seeing all along. Maximum array voltage, this is going to answer a lot of questions for a lot of people. 
133.92 volts. I have my solar panels connected in series, four 24 volt solar panels, so I'm hitting 130 volts on average across the board out of these solar panels. Now, maximum output power watts, I don't know why that's blank across the board. Amp hours today, I've gathered 55.6 amp hours, which is pitiful, horrible, very, very low. Now, I run my generator in my tiny house at night. Right now I'm running the Harbor Freight generator and a battery charger, so don't, don't stress I'm not pulling that out of my batteries. Watt hours, 790 watts. Yesterday 800, day before 800, day before 800. So I'm averaging, let's say, 700-800 watts. I'm averaging 800 usable watts of energy in a day. So, so here you can see on the camera today, yesterday, the day before that, and the day before that. Okay, you can see the last four days. Now the day before that you can't see on screen, but it was 190 watts. That was a rainy day or cloudy day. So I'm averaging 800 usable watts of energy a day out of a solar panel array of 800 watts total. So what it means is one, I'm not getting as much solar power into my battery bank as I would in summer. Uh, the sun is lower in the sky which means the sunlight is hitting the batteries indirectly. It goes through a lot more atmosphere before it reaches my battery bank. Therefore it is reduced in energy by the time it reaches my solar panels. In summer the sun is directly overhead and has less atmosphere to pass through and you get more power into your solar panels. So there's nothing wrong with my system because in summer I was hitting 750 out of 800 watts of solar. That tells me obviously that the system was fine. I was losing 50 watts give or take but that could also be because of heat. Solar panels when they're hot perform at a reduced rate. Anyway, so this is it. 800 usable hours per day. So I can basically say uh, for, all, for calculation purposes here, on an average winter day I am seeing one-tenth of the rating of my solar panels for the entire day. So if I have 800 watts of solar panels that means I get 800 watts of usable energy from the entire day. Now this is obviously going to change as the weather changes and as the sun starts rising higher in the sky, which it is now doing. I have an equalized charge was coming in. I have to check out and learn what the number 23 means there. And there were some faults which I'm going to have to look up. So I figured that would be interesting for you to see some specs and details from my TriStar Morningstar charge controller. Actually it's a Morningstar TriStar charge controller. Anyway, right now the current battery voltage, let me zoom back out a little bit. I have just gone to the overview. The current battery voltage is 13.81 volts. Actually, uh, obviously my charging current is negative because I am consuming energy. The charge controller is consuming energy at a tenth of an amp. So that definitely will account for some loss of energy overnight. My array voltage surprisingly is 0 0.04 volts. Um, so it does pick up a tiny tiny bit of energy at night and obviously there's no power coming in it's showing the batteries at Celsius right now minus points minus six degrees Celsius so that doesn't tell me anything I deal in Fahrenheit anyway I figured I'd share that with you right now give you an idea of what uh, things look like out here at the tiny house on wheels and what kind of information I can get from the TriStar charge controller. I find that very helpful seeing the daily output. I find that incredibly helpful having the the total usable watt hours today. So that tells me I could essentially run my laptop for about five hours and run my modem 24-7 period. That's it. 
not counting lights or anything else. So it's really tight. It's really, really tight right now. I am um, working on gathering together the wires and equipment needed and cleaning up the space. Oh, yes, I was cleaning in front of the tiny house on wheels today, attempting to get things chiseled out of the frozen ice in front of the tiny house so I can bring the solar panels up and mount them up in front of the house to get more afternoon energy and that'll really be interesting to see now and we'll be checking this from time to time together the status of my battery bank and of the solar panels and we'll follow up and see what a difference that makes when I add that extra array of solar panels now looking across the board here I had a peak of 940 watts usable energy nine days ago actually I can slide this over and it's over here in your screen now in your display nine days ago it was 940 watts now 12 days ago I only had 90 watts of usable energy come in that's horrendous that's absolutely sickening total in the entire day that's just horrible I don't know what happened here 14 days ago seems like I had uh, nothing coming in that's odd or is that the day I was moving my battery banks no was it only two weeks ago I'll be able to see because here 12.15 volts is about what it was when I brought over the forklift batteries so it's good to have a look here and see now here 30 days ago 140 total watts in the day 170 total watts 200 300 330 horrible horrible stormy weather back then and uh, the Sun was lower in the sky and I had shorter days so you can go back and see all the way up to 80 days back which you can't see back on here but and go back to uh, 60 days two months ago still s pretty rough winter weather 130 watts 740 watts 160 watts so you can go back here and you can see throughout the period what all I've had for for uh, full solar power output in an entire day so I'm averaging 800 it's not good but I'm surviving out here on it and I will I would love very much to increase that okay I have what I did is I laid down this is taking a long time <clears throat> to figure this out I have I laid down the shower stall I traced down where the drain hole goes and the problem is it runs right next to a floor joist and so it's really a problem because this stands up a bit and that means I won't be able to install the shower directly on the floor flat like I wanted to I'm gonna have to create a raised platform so that only the two inch PVC pipe goes through so I don't cut into my floor joist let me show you the pipe of course the advantage then is that I have less of a hole in my floor see I just have a two inch pipe I'll pass through and instead of making this massive well I was gonna cut a four inch hole for this to fit the entire thing through the floor as it was noted in the instructions to make a larger hole but with my floor joist being right there I don't want to cut that because this is well you can see this here is just the width of right this part and I was going to end up cutting this wide to drop the entire thing through the floor allowing me to put the entire shower stall right flat flush with the floor that is not going to happen because of that floor joist running through right there you can see the screws that's the floor joist runs right along through here that is not going to happen so 
I will cut the two inch hole hopefully there's enough room inch and a half it should be it should just just fit tight against that so it should work out and I'll do that tomorrow when I have daylight here and right now there's 25 mile an hour winds continuous with 50 mile an hour gusts so I don't really feel like putting a hole in the middle of the floor tonight and leaving that unfinished with the strong winds anyway that would be quite a refrigerator in the bathroom then so I'm gonna leave it at that tomorrow trace around that pipe drill the hole tomorrow there's a baby cat always gotta show herself in the video don't you and then I'll do that properly tomorrow I've got the pipe big enough to go through the floor and then underneath later on I'll attach the, the drain system uh, an elbow and then bring it on out to wherever I want to put it so that's where I stand for tonight tomorrow I'll be cutting a two inch hole in the floor and that's it and then I'll have to raise the platform this is two inches this is precisely now sorry it's a uh, with this screwed into the shower base was an inch and three quarters just under two inches and I'll have to check and see if I have any wood that'll fit I think the old barn wood might have the best dimensions for that to raise the shower base off the floor I'll probably lay down a bunch of two by sixes down in the floor and then screw them in to create a platform a solid platform for the shower base so it'll be raised up giving me the space for the drain to sit there without any stress on it so that's it for tonight oops piece of plastic on the shower stall was there well that's it then for tonight good night everybody Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project sitting in the tiny house on wheels